Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Asian Vision Dialogue. Our topic today will be talking about youth perspective on UK roles in Indo-Pacific. We will be focusing on the engagement between the UK's and Indo-Pacific countries and West forward in the region. Today we are honored to have Honorable Guest Speaker Ms. Linori, currently she is a Chivalry Scholar 2023-2024 at the University of Bristol studying Master Degree of International Security. She is also a Research Associate at the Mekong Center for Strategic Study at AVI. Without further ado, please join me to welcome Ms. Nori to our program. Greetings, Ms. Nori, and welcome to our Asian Vision Dialogue. Yes. Uh, as we know that the UK role in the Indo-Pacific is likely to continue to grow in the coming years. The region is becoming increasingly important for global security and prosperity, and the UK is well placed to play a leading role. Moreover, the Indo-Pacific region is also crucial to the UK's economic and security interests as well. So, in recent years, the UK has been increasingly focused on the Indo-Pacific region, known as the Indo-Pacific Tales. So, could you provide a brief explanation of Indo-Pacific Tales and why UK value Indo-Pacific? Good morning, Pule, and thank you for having me in this episode, and also thanks for the question. So, in 2021, the UK released Indo-Pacific Tales as a strategy that responds to the shifting international order. It's also a reviewed foreign policy in post-Brexit context. Thus, the integrated review of 2021 came after the 2015 Strategic Defense and Security Review. And lately in 2023, there was a refreshed integrated review that highlighted the more significant value and priority of this region, stating the UK needed to engage in the Indo-Pacific region more deeply for its own security and for the economic opportunities and to promote its values in the region. The UK prioritized this region as a reflection of the geopolitical shift with China's increasing presence, the potential threat from nuclear proliferation in the region, and the growing importance of the Indo-Pacific. And there are several key points of the Indo-Pacific tilt, which uh, first, the first of all is a geopolitical significant uh, by recognizing the growing economic and strategic importance of the Indo-Pacific, the UK aims to expand its presence and influence in the region as well. A second, economic opportunities. With rapidly growing economies and emerging markets, the Indo-Pacific offers significant trade and investment opportunities for the UK post-Brexit. And Brexit also shown the necessity, besides the EU market, UK shall expand the opportunities to boost the economic ties with other regional states like Japan, South Korea, and other ASEAN member states. And we also have security and defense cooperation by strengthening security and defense tie with regional partners to address common challenges such as marine time security, terrorism, and non-proliferation. And we also have um, the key point on alliance building uh, by collaborating with the like-minded nations, including the court and the ASEAN member, sta uh, member states, ASEAN countries to promote a rule-based international order and to uphold the multilateralism. It's also need to focus on enhance uh, diplomatic engagement by increasing diplomatic presence and dialogue with Indo-Pacific nations to foster closer political relationships and address regional issues. And last but not least, on development assistance by providing development aid and supporting infrastructure projects to promote sustainable growth and, and stability in the region. So this strategy works uh, simultaneously to adapt with foreign policy after Brexit and also enhance the UK role in the international order. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nori. Uh, the Indo-Pacific is a major center of economic growth and the UK wants to strengthen trade ties in the region. This includes free trade agreements and potentially uh, joining the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, or known as CPTPP. So could you update a bit on UK accession of CPTPP and what UK will gain from this agreement? 
Thank you once again for the question. So the UK has just finished the last negotiation and signed the accessions of CPTPP. And precisely in 2022, the UK exported goods and services with CPTPP countries account for 7.8%, which was 65.3 billion pounds, and imported 6%, which was 54 billion pounds. CPTPP is a trade agreement in Asia-Pacific bloc which aims to eliminate tariffs and other trade barriers for both goods and services. Joining CPTPP, the UK project to gain wider access of market to the Indo-Pacific region on top of the current bilateral economic ties with CPTPP countries. And those benefits include potential growth in the trade bloc, in the Indo-Pacific region, there is a projection that other countries may join CPTPP to increase the share of the global GDP. It's also benefit in uh, access to larger market for UK service providers. The UK prioritized services and digital trade to connect stronger ties with countries in Asia Pacific. So this trade deal will allow the UK firms to be a service provider and data flow being a part of CPTPP will reduce digital trade barriers as well. And of course, lower tariffs on goods exports. The CPTPP eliminates or reduces tariffs and non-tariff barrier to trade among its member countries. By joining the agreement, the UK could benefit from streamlined customs procedures, simplify regulation and lower tariffs, making it easier and more cost-effective for UK benefit businesses to export goods and services to a CPTPP market. It's also benefits to consumers as well. Uh, most imports goods and services from CPTPP countries will be subject to zero tariff for customers in the UK with cheaper price. And last but not least, investments. It will open more investment companies from uh, CPTPP members to invest in the UK within mutual investment protection. So all in all, it's a potential opportunity for the UK to diversify the trade market, building stronger ties with leading countries in Asia Pacific, such as Australia, Canada, Japan, and Singapore. This regional trade bloc will open more market access in, to, uh, in addition to European markets. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nuri. Related to the security interest, the UK sees that the Indo-Pacific is crucial for global security and stability. The Indo-Pacific is a strategically important region with a number of potential flash points. So how can the UK contribute in maintaining security and stability in the region? Thank you. In terms of security and defense, the UK sees the importance of alliances building, especially with the like-minded countries such as the US, Australia through AUKUS framework. AUKUS has two pillars, which the first one focuses on supplying Australia the nuclear-powered submarine as stipulated in SSN program. The second pillar focused on advanced military capabilities to promote security in the Indo-Pacific and those will include artificial intelligence and autonomy, quantum technologies, undersea capability, hypersonic and counter-hypersonic capability, electronic warfare, innovation, and information sharing. It's important to note that the UK support the first pillar of AUKUS through SSN's AUKUS program, in which several UK businesses will be responsible for producing, equipping the main components of the first UK SSN AUKUS submarine. The UK also prioritized defense cooperation with ASEAN, although ASEAN is not a defense alliance. As such, in 2023, the UK has applied for memberships to the ASEAN Defense Ministers Meeting Plus, or known as ADMM. Also, the engagement with the Quad. The UK seeks to boost cooperation with the Quad on the shared common goals in the region, which is subject to future practical cooperation. And those include bilateral talk with court members, collaboration on policy recommendation in working levels, engaging in court plus framework. And in fact, the UK commitment and engagement with the court is based on the enlightened approach to strengthen with allies to achieve regional security and stability aligned with the UK vision. To sum up, the UK view that building alliance and engaging in regional organization will uphold its role in contributing to secure regional peace and stability. 
Thank you, Ms. Nori. Uh, the UK is increasing its diplomatic engagement with Indo-Pacific countries and working to build partnerships on a range of topics in the region. So what have the UK been done so far with the Indo-Pacific countries, particularly the engagement with ASEAN countries? Thank you for the question. So I would like to highlight some important notes. First of all, the relations with the like-minded countries, precisely with the US and Australia. As a close allies to the UK, the US and UK declared the Atlantic Declaration Economic Partnership to foster a stronger bilateral relations on defense, security, and intelligence amid the correlation of security in Euro-Atlantic and the Indo-Pacific. At the same time, this declaration will scrutinize US and UK Indo-Pacific dialogue to support ASEAN to ensure regional peace and stability. With Australia, the UK has been progressing in cooperation under AUKUS framework with joint commitment to foster the Indo-Pacific security. With Japan to uphold the rules-based international order of free and open Indo-Pacific and cooperation within the framework, the UK and Japan has signed a reciprocal access agreement in January 2023 in which this agreement aims to bond stronger the UK's commitment to the Indo-Pacific, accelerate defense and security cooperation, possibility to deploy forces in one another's countries and carry out military exercises. With India, significantly, the UK has expressed a closer engagement with India to prioritize the Indo-Pacific. In 2021, the UK and India announced UK-India 2030 Roadmap, which is focused on uplifting the bilateral relations to a comprehensive strategic partnership and having defense and security cooperation as a main driver. This roadmap will develop a proactive engagement in terms of defense and security cooperation, marine time security cooperation, and other technological related concerns. In terms of regional cooperation, in 2021, UK became a dialogue partner of ASEAN, which connect closer and stronger ties with ASEAN community and ASEAN member states. ASEAN is a growing regional partnership, so it's believed that it is a great gateway for the UK to institutionalize its regional engagement for economic growth and development. The UK has worked with ASEAN on trade and investment, climate change, marine time security and other, creating more resilience in marine time security and transnational crime. ASEAN and UK also achieve a plan of action which highlight promotion of political security and economic cooperation. In terms of trading, the US, um, sorry, the UK trade volume with ASEAN increased by 21.4% from 38 0.3 billion pounds in 2021 to 46.5 billion pounds in 2022. So the UK has worked on various areas from security and defense to economic cooperation within both bilateral and multilateral framework. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Ms. Nuri. So last but not least, uh, from your perspective, what will the UK's involvement benefit to the Indo-Pacific region in the future? Thank you. Potentially, we could see mutual opportunities in terms of economic development and trade opportunities. The UK's engagement in the Indo-Pacific can stimulate economic growth through increased trade and investment flows, where countries in the region can expand their markets in the UK, and the UK also can open up more new markets for its goods and services, creating opportunities for businesses and entrepreneurs. And at the same time, the UK also gained its relevancy in the region. And as mentioned above, the UK CPTPP partnerships will reduce their trade barriers and facilitate better commerce, benefiting, uh, benefiting both UK's businesses and those in the Indo-Pacific. In terms of security and stability, the UK involvement in the region can enhance stability and address common challenges in the Indo-Pacific through AUKUS, the UK can address maritime security issues, counter terrorism efforts, and disaster management capability. 
there are also potential exchange in technology and innovation because the UK's expertise in technology and innovation can support knowledge transfer and capability building initiative in the Indo-Pacific. The UK can share their best practices promoting research collaboration and facilitating technology transfer, which can help transform innovation and digital skills in key sectors such as healthcare, education, and agriculture. Moreover, by promoting sustainable development practice, the UK can also contribute to infrastructure development, such as on digital infrastructure, energy facilities, that can boost economic development. So um, to sum up, there are many benefits that can be uh, provided by uh, the UK to the region. And at the same time, it's a mutual um, opportunity between uh, the region, the countries in the regions and also uh, the UK as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nuri, for sharing your insightful perspectives toward the UK roles in Indo-Pacific. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, our discussion has now come to an end. I would like to thank Ms. Nuri once again for your present and valuable time for joining our program today. Thank you once again, Bullet, for having me, and I hope to see you all next time. To meet Leah. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next episode.